Hello, so this is um, Life Inside the World's Oldest Psychiatric Institute. It's about 46 minutes long, the documentary itself. I wanted to share it because I found it interesting. Um, I hope you enjoy and thank you for watching. Money for an iPhone of my mum and she gave my brothers all a lot of money because she's got a pension now, so she's got a lot of money. And I literally asked for £600 and I said I'll give it back to her this Thursday and the rest on Tuesday with extra money on top. And it just got into a big argument and I told her I'm going to kill her and I said, if you, if I stay in this house I'm going to smother you in your sleep and I'm stronger than you so I'll win. And she smacked me in my face and I grabbed her face and I was like, don't ever touch me again because I love you but I will hurt you. And then she called the police and the ambulance came and then I had to come here. This is the world's oldest psychiatric institution. It used to be known as Bedlam, a place we hid those we called mad. You need some medication. Now known as the South London and Maudsley, I need to speak to you. it treats 50,000 patients a year. Any sign you shit yourself? I don't think so. And numbers are rising. <laughs> the staff and patients open their doors to show us what Bedlam Whoa. is like today. Mohammed doesn't need to be here, isn't he? Uh, responsibility to look out. This is a place most of us will hopefully never set foot in. When she is downstairs in the ambulance, could you just give us a ring, just so we'll cool down with a sheet, or well, a couple of sheets to cover up with, yeah? An A&E ward, mentally ill patients in crisis. Fifty-six-year-old Emmanuel pulled a rail off the wall of a 99p shop and started to hit staff with it. 20-year-old Gemma regularly threatens to jump off London Bridge. She was admitted after taking an overdose. Well, I understand I'm scared. Most of these people have reached a point where they've become so ill they're considered a danger to themselves or to others. I just want to do an herbal medicine. So this is your room? This is the sleeping area. Katrina is studying for a degree at one of the UK's leading drama schools. At 22, this is her third admission to hospital. She has schizoaffective disorder, characterised by mood swings and delusions. So that's my bare in bed. I don't want to bring too much. The last time I came into hospital, I practically moved in. So I've decided just a few outfits, some underwear, my handbag, food. Do you want a Jaffa cake or some cheesy things? I'm all right. Then. I'll have a Jaffa cake then. There you go, baby. Love you. What do you think of your room? I love it. You get so much support and help from family, friends, and the nurses and the doctors. You've got this big open space to yourself if you want to lock yourself away. It's just like having your own little apartment. Like, why are they called studio flats? That's what it's like. The Trust pioneered the use of short stay wards like this one, known as triage. Katrina and patients like her are assessed and either go on to a longer stay ward or back home to be looked after in the community. Uh, this is cells, electrical drums, net, um, cell neck, okay. so With beds at a premium, triage is like a sorting office, determining who really needs to stay in hospital. But the decisions carry risks. Here, there is a particularly high level of decision making. You know, we've got 18 beds, there's a fast turnover, we might be making 50, 100 important decisions a week and they affect people's liberty, they affect people's safety, they affect public safety. Nobody wants somebody to leave the ward and to take their own life. Nobody wants anybody to leave the ward and take somebody else's life. What they do? What they do? You know what? I'm just trying to 
Everyone. 51-year-old Rupert has spent much of his adult life on psychiatric wards. You're very funny. You're very funny. What's wrong, Rupert? What's wrong? We're going to do something. Come to my house. I'm going to be. Okay. You hear me? Okay. You are your gentleman. I'm a cameraman, yeah. Okay, gentleman. I'm a cameraman. What are you making a movie? I'm making a movie about, well, about the people that come onto triage and the people that treat people in triage. Go on, He came here from Jamaica as a young boy, but struggled to settle. Oh, yeah! Should we go out or stay in? Probably stay in. By the age of 17, he was diagnosed with bipolar affective disorder. Rupert came onto the ward voluntarily after an argument with a neighbour, but he can't leave until the doctors say so. So we're here to listen to your, your side of the events and what's been happening to you. Could you say a bit about why you've come into hospital and you know, how you've been feeling in recent days? I was forced to come in. Girl knows this. He got a baby with a black person, man. Right. She's insulting me by telling me that I have to make a lot of What does it mean by that? Okay. What plan to do, sir? I'm, cons I'm a consultant that runs the ward here in Lambeth Triage Ward, so... So, you know, you know, am I a mentor? Well, what do you think would happen if you were, were to return home now, for instance? Do you think there might be any problem there at home no with your neighbours? No That's good to know. The last thing to say before we finish is just with your medication, we've noticed that your the dose of the sodium valproate is just uh, it's on, it's on the low side at the moment. So that's why I would suggest is maybe just staying, staying here on the water at the moment. Oh, no. Well, I think we'll, we'll try and get you to speak to the home treatment team tomorrow. I'd like to think that you'll be able to go home reasonably soon, depending upon the factors that we discussed. Next week, no problem. Next week. Well, we'll see. Next week, sir. Okay, I'll finish there. Thanks very much. No problem. Good. Love you, mate. Okay. Like Rupert, half the patients on the ward are here voluntarily. The other half have been sectioned, brought in against their will under the powers of the Mental Health Act. Mental health, that means you effectively detain people, you effectively imprison them. That's obviously quite a power, and you have to sort of consider that quite carefully because you're depriving somebody of liberty. This is not prison. They've been declared fit by psychiatrists, and they're not policemen. Here in Lambeth, the rate of serious mental illness is three times the national average. Is, is she lashing out? Is she hitting people? Social deprivation and drug abuse play a part, but mental illness can affect anyone. I'm not sure if I understood him correctly, but he seemed to be saying that he was going to murder me if I ever went to Tottenham. When we first met Dominic on the ward, he seemed perfectly sane. You stop singing. I'm not singing. You want me to start singing? <laughs> what would you like me to sing? And to be a Jesus girl. What would I want to sing? One chair. Oh, David City. Oh, a lovely cattle shed. Where in my the lane of saw my wife and two daughters off. And usually I always kissed them goodbye in the morning. I actually walked, even though it was a rainy morning, to the end of the path in my dressing gown. And as I used to when they were really small, I was blowing kisses at the girls, waving them goodbye. I got dressed, I went to the shop to buy the paper like I always do if I'm not working. And um, I don't know if it was something online or something on the radio. I really can't remember. But I can remember with great clarity. I, I made a decision. 
I'm going to kill myself today. In terms of thinking about why I'm here and the circumstances of the overdose, still in a state of some confusion. I still don't understand why I did that. You should stay here for the moment, uh, for tonight, and we'll have a look at things again tomorrow in terms of how you feel. I'll take it on a day by day basis, perhaps, at the moment. Hi mum, I'm just writing this letter to you to apologise for my bad behaviour that I started towards you. I did not mean any of the things I said and I know they hurt you. I hope you can realise how much you mean to me and at times you make me want to hit you but you're my best friend and if I killed you I would then have to kill myself so that I could be, be a free soul. I hope you understand, I love you always. Kiss, kiss. You okay? Yeah. Why are you crying? Because I, I'm going to cry again. I just feel guilty about the way I've treated her. And it's not me, it's the bipolar and she understands that. Two days ago, Katrina threatened to kill her mum following an argument over an iPhone. Yeah. Oh, you see it. Her family admitted her to Lambeth Triage, a short-stay psychiatric ward where she's being assessed. She's still quite manic. I had a dream that my friend's like, on the train and there's a terrorist bomb, so I don't want her to go to work this week. I believe in a greater force. I believe in reincarnation. Maybe I was a bird when I was alive before. I want to fly. It's not going to work for humans. Having your belt taken, your razor taken off you when you arrive, quite a lot of metal everywhere, locks that can only be operated by the staff and not by the inmates. It feels quite like a prison. And I can see there's a reason for that as well. There are some seriously disturbed people here. And, you know, and I can't cl classify myself as sane, having uh, made a violent attempt on my own life. Dominic creative director of an IT company, this one? came onto the ward yesterday. This one. Oh. His wife and children found him collapsed in the kitchen mm. after overdosing on pills and alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my wife Rachel. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Have you had thoughts about what you want to do at this stage? I, I want to go home. I want to set about that healing process with my children and with my wife, obviously. There are things I need to tend to, matters of work, uh, and there are some life changes that I'm keen to get started on. You want to know your husband better than I do. Yeah. Do you trust him? Do you believe what he says? I mean, do you think he's filling us alive? Obviously, because I have a sort of duty of care, yeah. so it's my yeah. responsibility. But if I let you go and you, know, you jump on a train, you know, yeah. That's my fault. No, I do believe that, yeah, I, 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 I believe okay. that he, he, he would be safe. Um. Assessing risk is not an exact science. Triage is a kind of halfway house. Thank you very much. Yes. For the patients, life is put on hold. Decisions are made for them and about them. Most want to get back to a world where they're free. You know, it's not the first time he's expressed suicidal thoughts. It's the first time he's ever put them into play. Um, he has been a very up and down person. He always suffered really badly from winter depression. He always had great highs and lows. Dominic has been married to Rachel for 20 years. They have four children. After suffering years of dramatic mood swings, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder two years ago. I'd love him to be 
as happy and cheerful and lively as he was when we first met. But uh, I also accept that perhaps some of that liveliness and wildness in his character um, was perhaps a symptom of, of his condition. But you can get away with it when you're 20 and you can't when you're 45. After weighing up the risks with college, Dr. Bagley has made a call on Dominic. My judgment is that it's a fairly alien environment for him, so the better option is to allow him home. You can't spend your whole life uncertain. Sooner or later you have to make a decision, and you don't always get it right. And you have to trust people. Because if you never trusted people, you never let them out. You, know, you haven't got space for them. And, and besides which, I mean, ultimately, people, you know, the other thing, like what I always say is that if you really want to kill yourself, you will kill yourself. What are you looking forward to doing nice about getting home? Uh, hugging my children, I think. Sleeping in the same bed as my wife. Getting up in the morning, waking my children up. And all take a deep breath and hold hands and say, Okay, now where were we? The enormity of the decisions being made here was starting to become clear. Dominic would be going home in two days. Time would tell if Dr. Bagley had got it right. Rupert wanted his freedom too. Is it your room? But the risk he posed was more to others than himself. You happy with your room? Happy with what room? This room. Hello, Rupert. No, no. But is it is it comfortable? No. Can I ask you what do you think this this ward provides for you? Nothing. Nothing. He said he's got a history um, of underlying antisocial personality uh, disorder, we think, with a history of juvenile offending and violent offending. He's been in prison previously. Excuse me. Sir, on the way, please. So, we're kind of on the cusp. I mean, the, the additional problem now is that obviously he's asking for leave and sort of asking to go home. Yeah. Uh, so, I suppose really what I was thinking was probably for today would be maybe for him to have a bit of leave to see how that goes on an informal basis, just you know, for, now, for an hour or so yeah. off the walls, yeah. um, and to gauge you know, how well that goes, and then maybe that might help help us to decide on whether a treatment team might be might be suitable. Yeah, absolutely. What we do? Leave from the ward is down to the discretion of the doctors. It's won or loss on the basis of trust. What are you doing? I'm going to go shopping. No. No drugs. Oh, obviously. No, I want to know. No drugs, no alcohol. Okay. Right. And are you, you're not going to spend too much. No, I've given myself a budget of £100 out of my two grand that I owe. And have you got access to the two grand? Yes, but I won't spend it. You sure? Yeah, because I regret it every time I do do it. Sure. 100%. Okay. If I come back with more than 10 shopping bags, I've gone over. Yeah? I swear I won't. I'm literally just buying a few bits for myself and... Yeah. How reliable are you in this episode? I'm very reliable. Just put all your damn shit would have caused you... Don't be... You're going to cause me to have anxiety attack in a minute. You're being anxious. Yes. You're making me all hot and bothered. Well, it's just because I, I, I have experienced people I know, who, and we who spend a lot of money. I so. do. I, for Christmas, I spent a grand in one day and had okay. to get cabs everywhere because I had so much shopping. But I swear, the most I've spent, if I do go a bit doolally, it'll be 150. It will never be more right, than 200. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's give it a try. Yeah? Thank you, Doctor. Right, so so I can leave? Yes, you can leave. Thank you. Hallelujah. Right. I'm going shopping. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Thank you very much. Hello? Hello, if there's any problems. Yeah. And the birds still sing outside these, these windows where we sat again. Katrina's passion is the theatre. She just started a degree in Nothing set design 
but she suffered a first manic episode and had to drop out. Most of her friends have since graduated. After six days on the ward, Dominic is home. Yeah, I feel like it's been tough being away. Yeah. So it's good to be home and it's good to know that, you know, things are going to change. So. Hi, I'm a nurse phoning from Lumber Triage Ward at Lumber Hospital. Um, we had a patient go out on leave early and he hasn't returned. Is that what we Well, he's gone out on leave. Uh, Harry said that he would come back at 12 o'clock. He was seen shortly after this in the outpatient department being quite verbally abusive. What was he doing in the outpatient I'm not entirely clear. I think he's sort of banging on the window and shouting at them. But not in a friendly way. He may have missed medication yet. Um, but he's, he's very intimidating. There have been some issues with his neighbours recently. He's not in the hospital grounds. Uh, we haven't done a search now. I think it's pretty safe to say that he's not here. Eight hours after he was due back. Rupert returns to the ward. My emotion, my people, come to come to For the staff, trust has been broken. Had he come back yesterday after an hour or so and continued to be relatively polite, we could have continued that today and he could have gone out again for an hour or two. But, you know, he stayed out for eight hours, he's been drinking, he's come back for a large wooden stick, he's been very rude and abusive to people through the night. Chased one of the female patients with plastic knives, so it's just not acceptable to behave like that. More surprisingly, Dominic is also back. He's readmitted himself six days after leaving the ward. Sort of seemed in a manic mood and then which when he said, do you think I should go back to the hospital? I was like, yeah, I think you probably should. Manic how? How was he? Uh, he was sort of saying how he was sort of wandering around singing loudly, sort of marching around, you know, purposelessly, but sort of just behaving in a weird way, shouting at the top of his voice in public. You know, not the stuff you'd expect from someone who's completely in control of themselves. I made the decision I would um, readmit myself, which I think was probably an overreaction. Dominic wants to get out, but this is his second stay on triage in a week. There's growing concern about whether he's still a suicide risk. We, we, we put in place a, a sort of a leave plan with home treatment team, which obviously didn't work out as well as we'd hoped because you had to be recalled. You know. No, I didn't have to be recalled. Mm. I said, I think I should go back. In retrospect, an overreaction. What I should have done is gone and lined down, done some meditation, mm. make sure I wasn't alone. Okay. It's been a mistake, and this is still a mistake. I shouldn't be here. We will talk to the home treatment team about this tomorrow morning, and we'll see where we can where we can go, and as I say, I think it would be useful to have that meeting as soon as possible. Okay. As I said, no, I don't think it's okay. But I'm in your hands. Okay, well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult situation. I mean, I, I, I'm not prepared to discharge you at this point. We're going to have to use Section 5-2 just to, just to say that, you know, you have to stay on the ward at the moment. I'm not trying to escape, am I? But you're, you're, you're saying you don't wish to be here, so... Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not trying to escape, I'm not banging on doors. So you, you have We're having a civilised conversation. Absolutely, Dominic, but I have to 
be doing things from a medical legal perspective, which is correct. And you know, you're clearly saying you don't wish to be here. You said that over, over a couple of days. I'm, I'm clearly saying I'm taking your advice as a professional. Well, no, you haven't said. You haven't said. <laughs> okay, for the record, this is a, a qualified medical professional whose opinion I, I submit to. There's nothing I can do about that. Okay? But there's it, never been any question of me trying to escape. So you just, but, uh, with all due respect, uh, in this interview for the last 15 minutes, that's the first time you've said that, and you've only just said that on the back of what I just said. So you have not said that you're willing to take my advice. I am willing to take your advice. I'm sorry, I thought that was assumed. I'm not a doctor. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm very angry. No, I like the taste. Thank you. What am I taking now? I don't tell you what she's already about this. No, it's Michael Gordon. The one I'm getting given now stopped me from being really high. Like when I first met you guys, I was really hyper. I'm still hyper, but just under control. And then they give me another um, sedative, and then at night time they'll give me all of that plus um, a lanspine, which is at 15 milligrams, which is an antipsychotic, and lamotrigine, which is bullshit that doesn't work, which I'm on 125 of. Okay. Bye. Many of those who end up on Lambeth triage ward have relapsed because they've stopped taking their medication. That's just it. Nine. What's that, Robert? That's your spiridine. So why don't we just take that one tablet? No, it's no. It's germ nine. Okay. Angelica has just been admitted to the ward in a confused state. So you're going to see Yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier in the week, she flew to London from Germany to meet her fiancé. I come to London, I, I, I know he loves me and I love him. And why did, did he know you were coming to visit him? Did he know you were coming to visit him? No, it was a surprise. Her fiancé that she's come over to England for, as far as we know and as far as we've looked into doesn't actually exist and it's part of her her realness that she thinks that a fiance is here waiting for her where is he oh i think he, 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 he is in india what's he like he, in the prison what's he doing in india business she's been refusing her respiridone medication um for some time so what we want to do is offer her that again we've got it here and if she doesn't take it, I guess we need to make a plan to give the injection, so... When people present in crisis, very often the one thing that makes the greatest difference is medication. Is anyone going to volunteer to take an arm? Yeah. Can do legs? Excellent, okay. We spend a lot of time trying to encourage people to agree to take medication, but there are times when you have to do it against their will. So, would you be happy to take the injection, or would you take the tablet? I, 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 not this, and not this. Okay. The thing is, is that we're going to have to give you one of them. So the fact that you refuse them means that we're going to have to give you the injection. Okay. The situation is that you need some medication. You need to take something. And I say no, 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 nine. Andrew, I need to speak to you. What? I need to speak to you. Andrew, this is the last chance. Oh. We can't go. Oh. If we didn't have medication, you'd be back to how bedlam used to be, you know, because there would be no effective treatment and you'd have people having to be detained for very long periods of time against their will. And so if you like, one of the reasons we've been able to shut hundreds of thousands of beds 
since the 1950s is because of medication. It's never nice to have to restrain someone, but I think that, that went quite well, really, because she wasn't too distressed afterwards. It would be very cruel to leave her just thinking that she's waiting for this fiancé to come and this fiancé doesn't actually exist. What are we giving you? I ask the professionals. Just do what I'm told. Dominic admitted himself onto the ward five days ago, but now feels it was a mistake. He wants to go home. The doctors don't agree. I had that dream about being trapped in here in indefinitely. At which point I woke up, <laughs> woke up sort of gripping the blanket, sweating and shaking. And it's, it's weird being controlled. It's all about control. There are only two ways out of triage. Home, for those judged well enough. Hello. Or further into the system. <laughs> Having breached his leave, Rupert shows no sign of calming down. <laughs> So he didn't come back till about 7 o'clock yesterday evening um, he came back with a very large stick his stereo, some random pieces of fruit and vegetables hey, 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 hey. Okay. What are you eating today? Me? Okay. One minute he's absolutely horrible to you and then the next minute he's trying to be your best friend um, very changeable Which yeah, market? What market do you go to? Mr. Market. Oh, nice. My family wants to move out That's where you go shopping? Yeah, where you go shopping. Every week? Well, I'm in. Huh? Oh, yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. Rupert's been battling mental illness for the last 35 years. Oh, how much is it? How much? Oh, a few thousand pounds, I think. A few thousand pounds. A few thousand pounds. Well, I'm in. His condition is worse when he uses drugs and alcohol. I think we've got evidence now that he's still unwell, shouldn't have any further leave. And I think we're going we're to end up looking probably going down the mental health factories again and probably re re resectioning. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. So what do you do from here then? Well, it's hard because they're going to leave him or get him, but he leave it going or be outside because when he's, I mean, he would be likely he's going to get quite angry and he's told that he's being put on the section. Yeah. Well, what did you talk about, about being in hospital and uh, what your thoughts were about staying here? And also, not just that, but also not to have leave for the next few days because they should be on the road. I'm not on Sorry? I'm not on the Well, I can't go on the road. I don't know the law. I can't be one to do it. I stand one to do it. Well, what can I say? I don't know what the law is. If you're able to agree to this plan, then of course, but we need to get your agreement, really. So, that's part of the plan. You wouldn't be able to have leave over the, over the next few days. We'd like to stay on the road for the next few days. Okay? And, um, if all that goes well, then of course we want you to remain informed as a long as patient. Yes, exactly. This is going to touch you. Okay, I'll go away. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, did you want to ask us anything today? Anything else? Uh, no more. What's caught your attention, Rufus? No, we will get the painting. The painting? Psychiatric hospital has become a revolving door for Rupert. He knows the routine. Today he goes quietly, 
moving on to a longer stay ward. The doctors have decided Dominic can leave too, by the front door. Thank you for having me. Hope not to see you again. The doctor said we're very aware that you're not happy here and you feel it's having negative impact on on your state of mind. So I'm glad they picked up on that. I thought they might have missed it. <laughs> on that basis, she said, you know, we are happy to discharge you. You're good to go. Thanks. I'd like to know where he is and, you know, if if I'm not with him, I want to make sure that he's okay and stuff. Like, I'll just always be sort of checking up on him, which maybe he finds annoying or irritating, but it's sort of my peace of mind. I want to know that, you know, he's all right. And, you know, I don't want to be thinking all the time, you know, is he okay? And constantly be worrying, but it's just sort of what's happened. Like, I can't, I can't stop myself doing it. <laughs> I'm just trying to sort of calm myself and think it's going to be alright. I need to stop having sort of, you know, assuming the worst is going to happen because it is going to be alright. Three weeks have now passed since Dominic returned home. Yeah, it's my husband, that's right. Is he being taken to A&E? Thank you very much indeed. He basically tweeted a suicide note. Rosa then found the tweet, so I reported him missing. He's overdosed a second time after dropping his son at university. Again, it was pills and alcohol. It's all right, he's alive. They had, you know, all the search parties out for him, dogs apparently in a helicopter and, and everything. And then he rang at just after nine this morning from the phone box in, in tears, in great distress. He said, you can't love me, I'm such an awful human being. I mean, yesterday morning I felt, I felt really pleased that he'd been, you know, he'd given me a big cuddle in bed and I thought, oh, that's the first time you've done that for months. And then now I'm thinking, maybe he was just saying goodbye. A week after taking a second, larger overdose, Dominic has been moved back to triage ward. Dominic Collier risks are suicidal, um, ongoing suicidal thoughts. This AM, he spent the whole time in his bedroom. At midnight, actually, he was busy doing some typing on his laptop and uh, also at a point in time was observed crying um, when staff approached him actually said that he's feeling suicidal. He knew the consequences of what he was doing. He said, you children will grow up without a father. And he knew that, that that's what he, that's what would happen if he did succeed in killing himself. That something didn't, you know, didn't stop him trying to do it. Right now, I want him to be in hospital. But I feel really guilty when I say that because I know how much he hates it there. But you know, I can't tell myself different. I know exactly what I think, and that's that the only place that he's really safe at the moment is evidently in a hospital. So. There's clearly some part of me that is not, not happy being alive. You know, I think there's more going on in my mind than I'm letting myself know. You know, there, it, it feels as though there's a murderer in my head that's trying to kill me. Though suicidal, Dominic is still able to function, gets up each day and gets on with life. His behaviour doesn't seem to sit with the original diagnosis of bipolar disorder. 
his psychiatrist has begun to reassess what might be wrong with him. I suppose we've always had in mind some aspects of his behaviour may, may relate to a more sort of deep-seated problem as part of his personality development, you know, personality disorder. Personality disorder describes a condition which is long-standing, present from childhood, whereby a person's normal personality development, i.e. behaviour, reaction to events, relationships, is abnormal. It's a problem that's more an integral part of his sort of makeup. He had a fairly damaged upbringing. He was abandoned by his biological parents. There's a pattern of impulsivity which has been present for a long time, running through the course of his development, which has been manifested through excessive use of alcohol and drugs and, and, and suicidality. My old friend Rupert is down there. I would love to. I'd love to come and do a duet with you, you know. I used to sing all my children to sleep with that when they were babies. Of my songs. Redemption songs. It's all I ever had, Lord. Redemption songs. The new diagnosis means drugs and time in hospital are no longer the best treatments for Dominic. I don't want him out yet. Rosa? My opinion is not going to change, no matter what you say. I do not want him out yet. Rosa, I think you've got to be able to trust him. I can't trust him, Mummy. What if he starts acting weird again when he's out? Well, then we will we'll pull the emergency cord. I can promise you. Darling, come here. God, it's fine. It's all right. After three weeks on triage, Dominic returns home. Thank you. Thanks. He'll begin twice weekly therapy to try and manage his mood swings. Hello. It's a massive privilege being a parent. So pleased to see you. Hello, Zita. Bathing in the love of my family again. So glad I'm home. Six months on, the therapy is helping Dominic deal with his emotions and he's trying to win back the trust of his family. Hi Rupert. Hi. How are you? Can we come in? Yeah. Rupert's back home too, after three months treatment in hospital. This was a different Rupert. Six foot four, twenty-four stone. He was no longer the man you'd cross the street to avoid. This is where you come to sit, is it, Rupert? Yeah, normally, yeah. About twenty-two years now. Twenty-two years? Yeah. Do you think you'll need to go into hospital again? Well, you're not going to. Why do you call him Teddy Bear? Because he's lovely, and he's big and cuddly. Yeah, and he's kind, and loves people. 
Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't. You couldn't walk in Rupert's shoes. You love to walk in Rupert's shoes. Angelica had returned to Germany. She was taking regular antipsychotic drugs, and the delusions about her fiance had gone. Katrina's stay in hospital seemed to have worked as well. She was back living with her mum and had signed up for an arts course. So, how have you been? Really good. Really good. Such wood. Find some wood somewhere. And why is that? Because they've got the right dose of medication and the right medication that's in my system now, so it's working correctly and it's helping with the highs and lows, so I'm not really getting them. How does it make you feel then, Linda? Well, if I'm honest, I never thought I'd see the day. I thought, oh, she's always going to be suffering like this. And now she's OK. It's lovely. So I'm glad I've been diagnosed young. I'm glad I've got the right mix of medication at a young age. So I um, can go back to university if I choose to, get a job if I choose to. So, yeah, it's good. Thank you, thank you for my life, thank you. Thank you for my life, thank you. Thank you for my life, thank you. Thank you for my life, oh my God. Okay, so that's it for this video.